Here's Paddy Power's latest horse racing offer. It's money back as a free bet if your horse finishes second to the SP Fav in all races at one meeting today and at one meeting every day this month. Max £25 per race. Not available in shops. 18 plus. Gambleaware.co.uk. Welcome back. It's Bruce Millington, Ed Quigley, Paul Keeley, and from Paddy Power, Frank Hickey. And we're looking to two really, really high-class meetings at, uh, in Ireland on Sunday, Punchestown and Cork. And before we talk about them, we should absolutely ridicule the well-known racing broadcaster who tweeted viciously the other day, what a load of nonsense of people to make out that there's any sort of dilemma for Ruby over who to ride between Jackadam and Duvan. Of course he'll ride Duvan. <coughs> Ruby Walsh rides Jackadam. So, in your face, matey. Right, uh, let's look at the John Durkin Memorial, two o'clock at Punchestown. And Frank, how do you bet? We're five to four Jack Adam, 11 to four Sub Lieutenant, seven to two Black Hercules, 13 to two Outlander, and 16 to one Alechi Inwa. I love Matt Chapman really anyway. He puts up a view, doesn't he? Very occasionally he's wrong, but he's a good lad. He's good value and he's going to be great on ITV. But back to the matter in hand. Ed, will Jack Adam win? Uh, yes, I think he will. I think he'll find life a lot tougher than he did 12 months ago. I think over two and a half miles, he perhaps preferred the ground a little bit softer. I mean, it was absolute bog when he stuffed Al Salido 12 links last year. I think sub-lieutenant is, you know, it's like a duck to water over fences in recent times. And he made Outlander look ordinary. You could argue Outlander is becoming a little bit of, again, an excuse horse in many ways. But I think Jack Adams most likely winner, but he's going to have a good race on his hands here over two and a half. What's your verdict, Kills? Well, I, the others have to step up a fair way if Jack Adams at his best. I think he probably do, does over the trip one a bit further. Um, the one I would say, if you're going to take him on, take him on with Black Hercules, because I think he likes decent ground and he and he, and he jumped he jumped really well last year and, you know, he's got a bit of pace about him. So, you know, I think I think Jack Adam ought to win because on, on form, he's, he's, his form's, you know, almost a stone better than the others. But uh, Black Hercules was, was really good in the JLT uh, and, he, and he stayed on well. That was decent ground. He jumps really well and he's the danger. We're not expecting a, a tonne of rain, are we, Frank? So it should be going as currently stated. And if that is the case, who wins? <laughs> well, obviously, Jack Allen sets a fairly high standard. Um, he won a very easy last year. But I compiled the race up at Dow Royal that sub-lieutenant won last time. And I wrote him off completely, said he had no chance of beating the likes of Outlander. And he was unbelievably impressive. And then when you look at it, Henry may just have, Henry de Brahma, that is, may just have turned this horse inside out. Um, I'd be willing to give him a chance. Like, he's race fit where Jack Adam and Black, Her Black Hercules aren't. I don't really like Alechi Enwa, and Outlander was unlucky at Clamel, but that's him. Unlucky full stop, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, I'd be willing to chance sub lieutenants to cause a mini shock. Righty ho, let's have a look at the highlight at Cork. It's the 215, the Kerry Group, Hilly Way Chase, and potentially the best racehorse in the world, I think we can say, can't we? Could be, could he? Could be, couldn't he? Duvan, he makes his eagerly awaited seasonal reappearance. Paul Townend is lucky enough to be in the plate. And if you fancy remortgaging and lumping on Duvan, what price will Paddy Power give you? Uh, we're one to six, Duvan. Tens, Gilgamboa. Fourteens, Days Hotel. And the game changer, 25, Mazel Tov, and 50's Bear. OK, we'll have a quick chat about Duvan's chances. Uh, what, basically, I want to know each of you, if you fancy him, just say you fancy him, but what do you think he should do this season, Duvan? Run into King George. Yeah? Oh, it'd be brilliant. The horse could be injured next year. It'd be what's great, the, wouldn't what, it? What's the point of faffing around? Don't yeah. You? I think he's, uh, stamina, he sh his pedigree suggests he should get the trip. Uh, I think an easy three round Kempton. Uh, I, I just love to see him in the King George bully from a spectacle point of view. I think if you could get the likes of Q Card and Thistle Crack and Conegree alongside him, it would be one of the best King Georges of all time. But it certainly would. Yeah. There we go. Trouble is, though, of course, the two-mile chasing scene is, is absolutely it's mercy, yeah, it's, isn't it? it, it you it, can come back to that after yeah, failing. It, 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 it ought to be. It ought to be at his mercy. So you know, I'd imagine you know, knowing them, they'll probably stay at two miles. I don't really, I don't really see him as running in the King George. Um, you know, on his second start this this season, really. I mean, I, w I wouldn't mind seeing him do it, but I mean, great, wouldn't it? He's only ever run over two mile, two mile one, hasn't he? You know, yeah. I mean, he's not gone any further than that. So what? You know, why are they going to stick him up to that? And they've got, you know, big graded races throughout the season. I suspect they? they'll just mop up at two miles yeah. this year yeah, and then I, put I, him yeah. up next year if they fancy yeah, it, don't you? That's very much what I would expect. Uh, Frank, if Duvan were to line up in the King George, what price would he be? Oh, well, I think we're a big enough price. I, I'd be surprised if Yeah, but the price you are isn't the price isn't, he would be on yeah. the day, is it, obviously? Well, we, we were talking about this the other day and we were kind of saying he couldn't be much shorter than maybe 4-1, to 7-2, to two, if he did line up. That is uh, a 
assuming maybe Tisscrack runs too. If it was just Q cars, he might be a bit shorter. But um, if t if Tisscrack ran, yeah, he could be shorter than four to one. Mm, an exciting prospect for sure. That would make Christmas Day a day where we just want to get the day through, <laughs> wouldn't it? So yeah. it can get to the King George. Uh, anything else anyone fancy in Ireland on Sunday? We'd better start with you, Frank, because you're the most likely to have an answer. Well, I don't have much like betting, but there's a race, the Beginner's Chase, in the 235 at Pontestown. American Tom, we've seen... Plenty of cash for this for the JLT. He makes his, uh, his chasing debut, but he's up against a couple of decent ones. Woodland Opera, uh, Blue Hell, who was fav for the county herd last year. Woodland Opera might be a decent price to overturn the fav here. Um, he was backed as if he was a certainty on, on his chase today on the debut of Punchstown, but he's behind Haymount. But the second, Coney Island has come out and franked that form. Um, I think he might be an each way price to do American Tom and um, what else do I have for you? The sorry there now the 12.55 I thought toe the line up against Turcagua Turcagua isn't the most reliable of willies he'd probably be fav toe the line should have won on his hurls debut at Wexford when Ford's Meadow got up and did him on the line after he made a mistake at the last um, he was rated over, or she was rated over 100 in the flat I think that might um that might be an each way bet against the five in Port right. And so give me one horse each to back on Sunday, Ed Quigley. Oh, crikey. Um, I think it's going to be short price, but listen, dear, it's running to Cork, the mayor. That'll be very short. Yeah, man. I know, but I, I, to be honest, I've got nothing else. On short there. shot, Ted. I haven't, I haven't even, <laughs> I couldn't even tell you I was running against it, to be honest with you. But right. um, yeah, it's uh, outside of the, the big two races, I find it quite an inspiring better heat, to be honest with you. Kills. Yeah, I'd imagine Screaming Rose will go quite well in the uh, in the staying hurdle. Let's uh, so have to find out what time. It's one forty at Kirk. Oh, where? Kirk. 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 <laughs> New race course. Okay. And Frank, who's your Sunday nap? Um, yeah, my chance. Woodland Opera. Woodland Opera. Yeah. Which race is that? And again, in the two thirty-five. Oh stuff. yes. Okay, fine. Right then, weekend plans. Are you at Cheltenham? No, no, I'm not. No, I'm. Oh. Uh, Putting the Christmas decorations up, looking after Little and actually. It's, uh, it's Little and's <laughs> first Christmas, isn't it? Yeah, it will be, yeah, yeah. So That'd be nice, I'll get it? him trying to scream at the TV. And what sort of tree are you getting this year? Real or artificial? Uh, be real, be a small one now. As you know, the house has got far less space than it used to have, so yeah. uh, that's a bit of an inconvenience. So Kills, have you bought your tree yet? <laughs> uh, no, 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 I have nothing to do with buying trees whatsoever. Uh, the, the missus goes and does that, and I always tell her it's too early, even if it's not. <laughs> That doesn't sound remote. It's not remotely surprising, that, is it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm probably going to be spending the day tomorrow writing out a thousand times, never, ever back out Sam at Cheltenham again, given the way he's running at the current moment. <laughs> oh, you're currently watching <laughs> him, are he you? Is, he is actually making ground as I speak, but he's got in so, so close to so many... What's this? My, my cash out potential isn't very high. For Thanks for one. giving this broadcast your undivided <laughs> attention. Anything else for the weekend? <laughs> or am I distracting no, you? No, 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 no. Quiet weekend. Quiet, very, weekend. Very quiet weekend. And Frank, yeah. what are you doing, mate? Uh, I'm working today and tomorrow. We, know we have um, our racing bus tour on Sunday evening, which comprises of getting in a bus, drinking cans and drinking pints oh. in pubs around the place. So that's something to look forward to Sunday. Who's um, in that? Is that work colleagues or...? Work colleagues, yeah. Everyone in the racing department. Most right. people will be going to it, so um, I'm sure Jill will be delighted to see my head on Monday morning. How many pint, uh, How many pubs will you visit, do you think? I think last year we did something like seven. Seven? And, and then what? into town after, like. A half of half in each, yeah? Um, I'd say probably you'll go for two gin and tonics per pub. <laughs> and will Jill be waiting up for you when you get in with the rolling pin in her hand uh, and her arms folded? No, not folded. at all. No, no, not at all. No, no. Jolly She's good. like, let, let him off. That's her attitude. Oh, that's good. We'll wait till you get married, mate. All that fun will soon stop. <laughs> right, chaps, thank you very much indeed. We are back on Monday with the review postcast. Do please go on to iTunes and subscribe and rate us if you think we've done a decent job. Thanks very much indeed for watching. The Race and Post cast in association with Paddy Power. They prize support UK and Irish race in the night before.